Imagine you are in the huge mansion where just until yesterday a dictator of your country lived. The one who was transcending his power by enriching himself, but the one who had left the country and fled away just because the revolution happened. And now the gates of his mansion are open to anybody, to all citizens. You would see all this luxury around and um, no limits in resources. Anything that could be made uh, from gold would be made from gold. You would see these crystal chandeliers and marble statues. Uh, maybe you would see the labor laboratory that was testing food for this dictator uh, or uh, a garage with retro machines that was purchased all around the world. Or maybe there would be a private zoo. I was in this situation in 2014, it was February, when I first entered the residence of former president of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych. Um, as an investigative journalist and a citizen, we came there with a group of reporters because we wanted to save the papers that he left there that would uh, prove uh, his wrongdoings, that would, uh, those documents would show how he was enriching himself and how he was spending this money. Um, but when he was trying to uh, get away from the country, he ordered these papers to be uh, destroyed. So he drawn them into the lake. And professional divers uh, helped us to catch everything from the lake. So we were staying there for the whole week, drying those papers, learning them and publish publishing them. It's hard to describe what feelings that I had at that moment. Because on one hand, I was so happy that finally the revolution had won, we have the victory, and we were absolutely sure that, of course, the demand of protesters, everything will be fulfilled. But on the other hand, the revolution itself took already hundreds, hundreds of lives of protesters who were killed right in the cent center square of the country. But at that moment, we didn't know that the price for the freedom of Ukraine would be and will be much higher. Now it is a five year uh, of war with Russia ongoing. Already 10,000 of Ukrainians have been killed in these fights. Another bad surprise that we had as a society and citizens is that the the oligarchy and political corruption was still there for the whole uh, five years of the president who came to power after the revolution that was paid with such a high price. And uh, the oligarchy and political corruption is actually the best allies of Vladimir Putin in Ukraine because the weaker the country is, the weaker those governmental institutions are, the easier it is to keep under control of your interest the, the whole country. Of course, the number of, reform, of reforms were take, were, have been taken under the pressure of the West and under the pressure of a local civil society. But the country was still ruled by oligarchs and their financial interests, and they all owned all major television outlets in Ukraine. So I didn't want to work for them. I had no other choices in the country where to work for. So I was lucky to be able to establish a complete new uh, independent investigative uh, uh, journalist project, which is called Schemes now. And uh, we are a group of seven investigative reporters and a production crew. Uh, we are supported by Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty. And every week uh, we publish an investigation about political corruption, abuse of power and so on which uh, keeps the political elites um, uh, intense. Uh, just a few examples of what we un uncovered for the last uh, few years, how the president's friends were enriching uh, themselves by uh, getting uh, almost for free the access to a natural, natural resor resources uh, as uh, producing gas and oil uh, from the state. Uh, uh, we uncovered how the Minister of Interior fam uh, Affairs family was enriching uh, themselves by supplying goods for the army. Uh, we make secret meetings of politicians and oligarchs that they would be trying to hide. We made them public because we film them, we know where they are usually, so uh, we keep them unrest. Mm, corruption 
um, is bribes, and bribes are money that you need to hide somewhere. So we uh, show, we, we search, and we find elite property of officers, of um, prosecutors, of ju Ukrainian judges in Ukraine and uh, somewhere else. And their salary is incompatible with all that, uh, that elite property. Just recently, we published an investigation about the Ukrainian judge whose salary is probably 400 uh, dollars per month, and uh, his family owns uh, hotels. Um, apartments, uh, villas in Austria, Turkey, Emirates, and uh, in Germany. Um, we also uncovered how the general prosecutor of Ukraine went to spend his vacation in uh, Seychelles Islands and paid just for a few days $50,000, which would be his salary probably for a uh, few years. Uh, why that all causes the problem for the, the, for the corruptioners? Because they're interested in two things. First, it is, of course, the ability of enriching themselves, and second is silence. And uh, when law enforcement system is uh, weak, as it is in Ukraine, it's easy to uh, bribe a prosecutor or it's easy to bribe a, ju a judge, but when there are independent journalists, the, the corruptioners and kleptocrats are in trouble. Uh, now, the Vladimir, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky is the, became a president of the country just recently. And uh, together with war uh, with Russia on the east of the country, together with unreformed justice system, he, uh, together with oligarchy again, uh, he received a strong civil society. Uh, and the country was a so strong civil society. Um, so we haven't achieved democracy yet, and we haven't achieved the full uh, rule of law in the country, but it is so important to have press who actually promotes those values even under the pressure. In a smear campaigns that we often have, we have been called uh, Kremlin agents because we criticize the government in times of war. But the truth is that independent journalism is not serving the government, it serves the people. Thank you.